So that is a 1961 Goodyear wheel and brake set on Mike Victor uniform. And right from day one, Chris started telling me that I should replace it. And what dragged the plane in 1972? <laughs> 65, I think. 1965. So today we're going to replace that because uh, on the last annual, we needed to do the brakes. They weren't working properly. And it was really hard to get the parts to fix it. So the only and the best way is to completely replace them with, uh, what am I replacing them with? Cleveland wheels. Cleveland wheels and brakes. Pretty much the only game in town for this airplane. There's, uh, there's one other option, Alaska Airframes or Airframes Alaska or whatever, or whatever they call themselves today. Um, but their customer service sucks. And they couldn't tell me if they actually had approval for my airframe. There's the conversion kit, it doesn't take much. Look at them. Brakes. Carriers. By now, a lot of the, even the late, like, uh, a lot of the planes in service, these are starting to wear out. So this will be, like, brand new. Huh, that's cool. I don't know how much they cost to buy new. Quite a bit. Look at that. Wow, very nice. <laughs> I've never done it with new ones before. <laughs> They've already creased. Oh yeah. Wow. And so we just changed the carriers. I wonder if we have to shim it. We'll have to read the instructions. To shim to get the, the caster and camber on the wheel correctly. We may need to put some shims in there but that'll be in the directions and I think I got some shims in here so we're good and they want the brake running behind it or from it we'll see that we'll see that yeah Proper <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old invention of the leaf blower. The big ones are really good. They can fucking just move everything. Yeah. I like the one they got. Cool. So that's just the water pump wire. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing fancy. I think we'll retain that for later. But all money did. It's like that simple. <laughs> Junk. Junk. Didn't I get that disc out last time? Yeah. Oh, puck. That puck's worth about a million dollars. It's all it's used. One, it's one of the last ones of the hill. We went out there in YouTube land, the one we got to. <laughs> Partly used. At the last annual, I searched high and low to get those. And I know where, I know someone who has a bag full of them. So, if you need some. So those little shims you see here, we've got two different size bolts. Yep. And, and so those shims that we saw there are to accommodate the fact that we got two, two different bolts. size bolts. Okay. 
That's it. We'll get rid of this old piece of junk here, I think. The plow. So we reuse the shaft? Yep. The axle. The axle, of course. All it's good for the skin. Tip the wheel, the tire off the wheel. Old wheels, those will go in the scrap bin. And so we're just going to put the tire back together. Which is simply uh, taking it apart. Hey, so the, the older style ones use a felt seal in here. And so this is using a rubber seal. So it's the latest and greatest in technology for reseals so the, the seal should last a lot longer get some new nuts good What do you call those, Chris? The wash plates. Wash plates. Yeah. And so you'll see, okay, so uh, let's, here, I'll let the jack down. Pick up my tools. So, and watch it, watch it move. So this, the wheel's sitting au natural now. I mean, nothing's holding back on it. Okay. So it washes it. So it's not sitting, the rubber's not holding it back or anything like that which gives us a true uh, sense of what the caster and camber of this wheel really is. So what we'll do next is we'll go lift the other side and we'll set it on the other two wash plates. And then we're gonna check our caster and camber while I'm working on the brakes here. Now have smoothed it, so it's sitting correctly, okay? And so we're gonna set this board, uh, this big piece of metal here, like that dot across the front. The it looks good. And we only had, it was shimmed before, we transferred the shims over, right? and Cleveland said nothing but shimmy. So, yeah, so I'll flip it around then. 1.3, right, so we have different angles, mm -hmm. right? So that one's pointing out a little bit more than this one, and, our, and our, we're slightly different. So we just, we've got a chart that tells us what we can do about it. Okay, so here we are. All right, so there's our there's our wash plates. There's what I just did. Yep. All right, except my carpenter squares at home. All right, so we did a different one, and then here I did it differently rather than so I got, I just measured the angle on the back side of it. Yep. All right, which makes sense. All right, and so toe in on a one seventy two. We're allowed zero to sixty thou. Our our camber is okay, yep. uh, and our toe in is a little excessive. We're allowed zero to sixty thou, and we're now at we're figuring about one hundred twenty and one hundred sixty. And so we're gonna have to go in and change our shims a little bit to flex that. Okay. All right, now we bleed. We're done. So you bleed from the bottom up? Yep, we're gonna, uh, yeah, we'll just bleed up there. The actuator at the top is, it's an open system. So the actuator at the top actually has a little vent hole in it. And so I'll send my men up there to watch. 
and I'll pump it until oil squirts out the top of our actuator then we know the system's full we'll wipe up our mess up there and we'll check everything and we should be good so this is the the back side of the right pedal tell me when you're ready Okay, push the brake, Ben. Oh, braking. Yeah, it's good. All right, get ready for the next one. Brakes? It'll Chris? have brakes. Okay, that's good, Ben. We're good. Okay, so I'm taxiing a little faster than I normally would just to see if there's any wiggle or shake. I've already did the break-in on the break-in on the brakes, um, which is to do some high-speed taxis with the brakes on just to warm them up, get them really hot. Then you let them cool down, and then you test to see the braking power. I already did that, so I just taxi a little faster than I normally would, and uh, there's no wiggle or shake, so we're all good that way. Uh, I think we've got the camber and the toe in and everything set properly so let's get off the ground and get on our way back to Oshawa and see what happens Edenvale traffic Mike Victor uniform taking off runway 31 Edenvale speeds live and we're off approaching waypoint Edenville traffic, Fox Trot, Mike Fix uniform, departing to the east, 3500, switching to 126.7, Edenville. Traffic advisor for the Oshawa Peterboro region, Cessna 150, this is Golf Alpha Charlie Sierra. I'm currently three nautical miles north of the town of Kendall, at 4500, the uh, VFR route to Oshawa Airport. If any trouble, please contact Golf Alpha Charlie Sierra. Busy day on the radio today. Busy, busy day. So everybody wondering about about why the wheel change. I mean, those wheels were, were put on this aircraft in 1961. A uh, couple of years after that, Cessna switched to the wheels that we just put on. Uh, much better brakes. That's the main reason. So the brake and the wheel, I, think, I keep saying wheels, but it's really a wheel and brake combo, um, both together. This adds a disc brake, a much better disc brake, bigger brake pads, more stopping power, uh, and less shake and wobble when it stops. We also lost eight pounds. So the plane is eight pounds lighter, which means I can carry eight pounds more stuff in the aircraft. Um, and really it's just, you know, Chris jokes that we brought the plane up to like 1972 in terms of technology. And for certified aircraft, that really, you know, it's laughable in a lot of ways, but there's some stuff that just has not changed in forever. Um, the next change we're going to make to Mike Victor uniform to sort of drag it into maybe the 1980s um, is we're going to put an electronic ignition on the engine. We're going to take off one of the magnetos. There's two magnetos. We're going to take one off and we're going to replace it with an electronic ignition. And that's coming up in a couple of weeks. A uh, technician from the companies coming up from Michigan, they're going to come to Chris's shop. Uh, we're going to tear it down, rebuild it, put the uh, put the EMAG in, and, uh, and then do some testing. And the promise there is reliability. Um, if you watched some of the older episodes on this channel, the magneto that's on, the magnetos that are on this were made by Case Tractor Corporation uh, way back. Probably, uh, probably the 1950s when when those were designed. Even though it's technology from much, much, much earlier, um, this will give us uh, probably some advanced timing options, uh, better spark, stronger spark, more consistent spark, which should lead to a little bit less uh, fuel consumption and a little bit more power. And for all the people that are wondering, you know, what sort of numbers I'm making, because I get questions a lot after I added the stole cuff and the wing extensions um, and the VGs, did I get a lower speed or higher fuel burn? Uh, right now I'm running at uh, 2370 RPM, just slightly rich of peak, uh, 
7.1 gallons per hour, and I've got a true airspeed of 112 miles per hour. And I'm in miles per hour. I know that I know that Trent Palmer laughs and says, we're not in a boat. Why would I use nautical miles? I'm going to use miles per hour. My reason for using miles per hour is this plane was built certified miles per hour. I left it miles per hour because the POH is in miles per hour, and why do a bunch of conversions and make mistakes? Just keep it, just keep it as the POH says. So another video coming up shortly, actually two videos coming up shortly. I went out to Seattle, flew out to Seattle, and then drove up to Bellingham, Washington to visit Lyle from Six Pack Arrow. Uh, he's working on an STC. So you see the panel here, Lyle made this panel for me. He's working on an STC or has an STC already for later model 172s. He's working on the STC for the uh, 172A, B, and C, I think, or at least I know B and C. And that changes the the uh, structural panel, which is behind the panel. You can't see it. If you watch the installation videos, you'll 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 have no you'll know what I'm talking about. You're not supposed to cut it because it's structure to the plane. It keeps the plane from twisting. Uh, integral part. As you cut into it, you weaken the structure of the aircraft. So in order to get uh, some bigger screens in here and sort of arrange this in a in a in a, in a more synchronized way, um, he's coming up with a new uh, panel system that just has giant holes. Uh, it comes up a little bit higher uh, than this panel does, and it's a little more squared off here at the edges. That'll allow me to put a bigger screen here, the bigger Dynon screen, and sort of arrange some of these other things in a more practical manner. Uh, I also stopped by Dynon because they're just outside of Seattle as well, and I, I took a look through their factory. So there's a, there's a video coming of me uh, talking to Lyle about what he's doing for this aircraft, and also another video coming up uh, at Dynon where we walk through and we look at their production process and uh, get, a, get a good overview of what they're all about. Uh, we also go to their test, their test facility at Payne Field um, and take a look at that. So those videos are coming up shortly. I hope you'll come back and take a look at those. Uh, we're getting close to Oshawa. I'll be switching over to their frequency shortly. We'll be landing and uh, hopefully the wheels work out exactly the way they're supposed to. Oshawa Tower, this is Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform. Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform, Oshawa Tower. Oshawa Tower, Foxtrot Mike Victor Uniform, Cessna 172 with information echo currently 3,600 feet above the town of Pontypool inbound for landing. Last departed Edenvale. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, runway 30, perimeter 3016, cleared right downwind, report entering the zone. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, squawk guy down. 1257, Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Victor Uniform Tower, traffic exiting Charlie, clear to land runway 30. Clear 30, Mike Victor Uniform. Now go, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Quebec. We're cutting taxi back to the active. Uh, this one is our local east departure at 3,500. Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Quebec, ground, give way to the beach sport off your left hand side on Bravo, then taxi Bravo, contact tower 1201, holding short, and squawk 1246. Short 30, squawk 1246, and give way to the aircraft to our left, go, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Quebec. Echo Uniform Hotel Ground Taxi Bravo Alpha Main Apron Advisor Run Up Complete. Please request taxi to active. Thank you very much for watching. It means a lot to me. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff coming up uh, in the next few weeks, and then hopefully I'm going to be taking Mike Victor Uniform on a long cross country. Unfortunately, Julie won't be with me for that. Um, going to be doing it on my own, so uh, take a look for that. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.